Thanks for checking out this movie review. This is for the 2018 film release Necrotronic, uh, and it actually just hits Shudder, so this is the first time I think it was released in, in the United States, now in 2019. I hadn't heard about it uh, prior, so when I'd heard that this one was, was hitting Shudder and I read the description, I was like, this seems like it can be crazy slash fun slash funny, so let's check it out and see what the deal is with this. So uh, this is an Australian film, which it kind of seems like Shudder grabs a lot of Australian horror films, which, you know, I'm not saying that's one way or another. It's just kind of an observation that I had. I was just like, huh, they seem to grab a lot of Australian horror. So um, it was written and directed by K Kaya or Kia Roche Turner, uh, as, as well as a, another writing credit with Tristan. I assume they are same last name. I assume they are related. Uh, they did the film Wormwood, Road of the Dead, which I do remember watching, but I don't remember a ton about it. I do remember it was kind of fun. It was kind of like a fast-paced, stylized uh, zombie film. Um, so, yeah, I remember I remember enjoying it. Let me put it that way. Oh, just so people know, this is going to be a no-spoilers review because this is such a new film and it just hit, sh hit shutter. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but if you've already seen the film and you're watching this review... You will understand what I'm talking about, so you can still watch it. No problem. All right, so Monica Bellucci is in this. When I saw that, I was like, huh? Because at one point, a bunch of years ago, she was one of my film crushes. Uh, when she, I think when I first saw her in Brotherhood of the Wolf is when I first was like, oh, I like some Monica Bellucci. And then she was obviously in Matrix Reloaded. Uh, she's probably in the horror realm most well-known for the film Irreversible, which I've not seen yet, but once again, it's another one of those films that's on my gigantic over 500 film list that I'm working on. So eventually, eventually. And Monica Bellucci did a good job in this. I want to say that right up front. For the character she was trying to play, I think she played it well. She delivered um, kind of a, a nice sinister feel and kind of unfeeling at the same time. And um, if you see the film, you'll know what I mean, which I would recommend it. I'm going to recommend it up front. I would recommend seeing it. David Wenham is in this. Not He doesn't have like a gigantic part in it, but he's got a part in it. You know, you know J David Wenham. Not Sean Bean, the guy who looks like Sean Bean, who was, I think, the character of Faramir in the Lord of the Rings movies. And he was also in the movie 300. That's what he's best known for. But he's most well known in the United States, I think, as the guy who looks like Sean Bean, but is not Sean Bean. So he was in that, and I was like, oh, that's that guy. Um, so let's get into talking a little bit about the movie. But like I said, no spoilers. They use an animation in the beginning of this to kind of explain backstory of the world we're going to be stepping into with this, with the movie, which I think is smart. I, I always like when there's kind of like a setup, especially when it's something like this, because this movie's like horror, sci-fi, comedy. So especially with the um, going into the future and making it sci-fi, I feel like it's always good to, to have context up front of what should we be expecting? What is the environment we're going to be dumped into? What world are you creating, basically? So they did it with an animation. They had comedy aspects to it, and um, I think it worked really well. I really like how they set that up um, because it made it so that you weren't like, huh, what's going on? Because with movies like this, especially if you haven't read the synopsis of it up front, you kind of could step into it and just think that it's it's present life and then when things start being kind of like weird or wacky then you're just like a little turned off but if you know going into it okay this isn't you know real life this isn't present day real life this is in the future there's other crazy things at at hand here it sets your expectation level so you're like okay this makes sense or that's fine I'm down for that so I like that touch of it uh, it's kind of a crazy concept, actually, <laughs> that it starts with, which is, once again, why it's good they introduce it up front. So, yeah. Uh, it, I say it's crazy, but even though it's crazy, it makes it fun. I will say that. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Shaun of the Dead. The comedy, at least in the beginning, reminds me a lot of Shaun of the Dead, especially the interplay between two of the main characters uh, feels very much like Shaun of the Dead, I will say. Which, it's been a while since I've seen that movie, so I should go back and rewatch it. 
So I wrote down while I was watching it early on, CG blood is not my thing. I don't like computer graphics blood. Uh, sometimes I can handle it when it's like a super quick shot and you don't get enough time to like focus on the blood. But in this film, they have some CG blood and there's enough time for me to focus on it. The problem is it looks fake because the physics of it is not right. You know, when you like spray some blood or squirt some blood, it is it, gravity hits it a much different way than how it usually is executed from a CG standpoint. So it usually takes a lot more time to fall out of the air when it's CG and that it just feels off. It looks wrong. And that's the reason I just don't like CG blood because the physics aren't right. And that kind of like takes me out of the movie for a minute. Cause I'm just like, that's, it's weird. It just, it's that, just that quick feeling of like something's off, something's wrong. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but that's what it does to me so i don't like it uh i will say though there there's a bunch of other cg stuff in here which looks pretty good there's some really awesome looking cg stuff there's some kind of wonky cg stuff like the blood gets kind of wonky but there's also like fog at one point that actually looks kind of wonky and a few other things but it but it's usually kind of quick when they don't look all that great but there are some really good looking things so overall i think the cg was good in this i was happy with it it was solid the comedy is pretty good, but, but, this film does something I hate, which is where you load it up with comedy in the beginning and the middle, and then maybe about halfway through or a little bit past that, you start really backing off the comedy a lot. Now, I understand that, you know, you need to do story, blah, 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 but um, you can find a way to intermingle the comedy with the story. It's fine, especially when the film is billed as horror uh, horror sci-fi comedy i want you to, i want the balance of comedy throughout and this is it's just one of my pet peeves i know it probably doesn't bother everyone but i always hate it where the comedy's loaded up in the front and then it's barely there in the end and this film does that it is barely there in the end um the, you know they still have some comedy at the end which i appreciate but i just wanted more i want it to remain consistent um great use of colors in this. I love the use of colors, but it also made me think, why is it that as a society, we're like, we equate futuristic with like neon lights? Is it just because of Blade Runner? Is that why? Is, is it because that's what Blade Runner did? So now everyone, at least of certain generations, just thinks, ah, it's the future because there's tons and tons of uh, neon lights on the buildings and underneath cars while they're driving and I don't know. Put your comments down there. I'd be interested on what everyone else's take on that is. Uh, the props and the sets look really good. You can tell there was a lot of time and uh, put into the production of this. They really, really put a lot into it, and it shows. The stuff looks good on screen. And in general, it looks really good. Like, it looks great. The cinematography is really good. The directing is really good and fun. The acting, for the most part, is quite nice as well. I didn't you know, I, I don't really think I had many issues with any acting points. There is one character who has m most of the comedic stuff, which I appreciate, but is not the best actor. So, um, I don't know. I feel like the, the, the comedic stuff and not being the best actor kind of like levels it out a little bit. So, just saying. Uh, there's This is a small thing, but towards the end of the movie, there's a very odd song choice. It just feels like it doesn't fit. Uh, especially because there's there's been no music, like no song like it until that point, and I feel like it just does not fit the situation. And like I said, there's there, there's been no music like it prior to that, and it's just like this one little blip in the film of this song, and you're just like, what? Like, why are we choosing this? What, what is the deal? This is just weird. Um, so there's great directing. Uh. Okay, I have to say, this is a super ambitious concept, and to be able to actually pull it off on film is a pretty big accomplishment, in my opinion. The fact that, that this concept was was done for a script, and then these two guys said, hey, let's uh, actually make it. Actually, I don't even know if it's two guys. Kia or Kaya and Tristan. I assume, Tri well, I can't even assume Tristan's a boy. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, these two individuals, it's very ambitious for them to have written this up and then been like, we're going to put this on screen because there's a lot to it. Like like I was talking about, like the props, the set, 
um, a lot of CG, and I assume that I've never shot anything with C with you know the idea of putting CG in after the fact. So I can imagine it's a real pain and really hard to plan out. So I don't know. I just felt like this was super ambitious, and I think they pulled it off pretty well, to be honest. Uh, the story isn't anything special, I will say. Uh, this is what I wrote down while I was watching it. The story isn't anything special. It's just about looking good, being fun, and making some solid jokes. There are actually times when it feels like the story is getting in the way. And this is exactly how I feel. The concept is cool. The world they set up is cool. The full-on story is uh, not that great. And like I said, at times it actually feels like the exposition when they're trying to push the story forward just gets in the way of the fun, gets in the way of the comedy, certainly gets in the way of the comedy, especially for the end portion of the film. At least the end, like, third, maybe, eh, maybe quor end quarter, and third, somewhere in there. But, yeah, so, but, focusing on the positive aspect of it, it's fun, it looks great, it's funny, and it's just a good time. I enjoy it. It'll, it yeah, it, it's a fun time. Uh, there's a theme that kind of, uh, this is, this may be like a forced uh, theme in my opinion, but I saw something in it and I was like, I don't know if this is intended or not, but to me it kind of plays like this, that there's a theme that technology makes it easier for people who are evil to enact evil. Uh, it's just kind of this unwitting thing where we just advance technology and we don't think about what bad things it can be used for. And inevitably, even when you're advancing technology for a good reason, someone's going to use it for something terrible. And that's kind of at the heart of this. Um, yeah. And that's actually the end of what I have to say. Cause my last note was about talking about the frequency of the comedy in it. Cause it I've talked about it enough during this. It really friggin' bothers me. So anyway, uh, what would I say about this film rating-wise? So I'm going to do it uh, like I always do out of five stars with half stars in play. I'm between a three and a three and a half. I think that because of the lack of comedy, well, because the comedy kind of falls off towards the end, and because the story is actually not all that great and gets in the way, I'm going to go with the three. But it's a very solid three. And I would definitely say if you have any interest in seeing it, if at any point you heard about this movie, you read the synopsis, whatever, or you're seeing this for the first time, you're like, what is this? Definitely give it a shot. At least watch it once, in my opinion. It is a good time. You will not be disappointed. Maybe you will. But if you're like me, you won't be disappointed. Just saying. Anyway, put some comments down there. If anyone has, is watching this and you've already seen it, I want to know your opinions on it. Um, yeah. So, uh, please, before you stop watching this, please hit that subscribe for me. It means a lot. That's your way to encourage me. I don't make money on this or anything. It takes you literally like a second and it can mean a lot for my channel growth. And I'm just trying to grow it so that there's more interaction. You can do the thumbs up, but the big thing is to subscribe. Uh, also you can hit that notification bell cause that'll let you know whenever there's a new video up. But anyway, thanks for checking this out regardless. And until next time, keep it brutal.